The alien counselors watched in shock as they saw surveillance footage of humanity's giant railgun Goliath, a weapon they'd banned as too horrific for war, blow a Kalthari moon into cosmic dust. Now Nathan Williams, the human veteran, stood on trial for his life, his hands locked in stasis cuffs before the Prylorian High Counselor. The rest of the Galactic Council murmured their disapproval, mandibles clicking and eyes narrowing at the sole human representative. This cannot stand, Pryler rasped, his segmented body quivering with barely contained rage. Humanity agreed to abide by our conventions, and you have betrayed that trust. The Kalthari are all but extinct, and an entire world has been shattered. The insectoid alien jabbed an accusatory claw at Nathan. You will answer for your crimes. Your species' very future hangs in the balance. Nathan said nothing. He simply stared ahead, unflinching. He knew what he had done, what humanity had been forced to do. The Kalthari would have wiped them out, erased human civilization like so many before. Humanity built the railgun for one purpose, survival. Their place in the stars depended on it. Now Nathan would pay the price for that choice. But he did not regret it. He would not let his species die, not without a fight. The emotional stakes here are that humans will be erased or wiped out if they fail to defend their actions. Humanity's very future and survival depends on the outcome. The introduction uses aggressive, graphic imagery like blow a moon to cosmic dust and sets tension with the Council and aliens' reactions. The mystery is how Nathan will respond and what he will do. The intro sets up that he must fight for humanity's very survival. David Erickson stood before the Galactic Council, his posture straight and his expression resolute. He surveyed the assembled alien representatives, taking in their varied forms and the hostility emanating from many of them. But he would not be cowed. He had a duty to defend his client and his species. Esteemed members of the Council, David began, his voice clear and steady. I come before you today to present the truth behind the actions taken by my client, Nathan Williams, and the human race as a whole. He activated a holographic display, showing images of the Kalthari's conquered worlds and subjugated peoples. The Kalthari Empire has a long and brutal history of expansion and conquest. They have shown no regard for the autonomy or well-being of other sentient species. The display shifted to a star map, zooming in on the Zeta Crucis system. We have evidence that the Kalthari were amassing a massive fleet in this system with the intent of launching a surprise attack on Earth and its colonies. Murmurs rippled through the chamber as David highlighted the moon that had been destroyed. This moon was a key staging point for the impending invasion. It was heavily fortified and housed a significant portion of the Kalthari fleet. He turned to face the Council directly. Humanity had no choice but to take decisive action. The Goliath was our last resort, a desperate measure to prevent the annihilation of our species and the enslavement of our people. The chamber erupted into chaos as representatives from various species shouted their opinions. Some pounded their appendages on their seats in support of David's argument, while others hissed and clicked in disapproval. A serpentine delegate rose, her scales shimmering under the chamber's lights, the Kalthari's actions cannot be excused, but the use of such a weapon is an atrocity. The humans should have come to us for aid. David shook his head. With all due respect, the Council has a history of inaction when it comes to the Kalthari. How many species have been lost while you debated and deliberated? Another representative, a bulbous creature with multiple eyes, spoke up. The humans had the right to defend themselves. No species should be forced to stand by and watch their own destruction. Amidst the growing discord, Pryla slammed his clawed appendage against his podium, silencing the chamber. Enough. The law is clear. The use of planet-destroying weapons is forbidden, regardless of the circumstances. He fixed his compound eyes on David. Your arguments are nothing more than a feeble attempt to justify the human's barbarism. The Council will not be swayed by your excuses. David met Pryla's gaze unflinchingly. The Kalthari left us no choice. We acted to preserve the very existence of our species. If the Council cannot understand that, 
then perhaps it is not fit to pass judgment on humanity. The chamber once again descended into an uproar as the representatives reacted to David's bold statement. Pryla's mandibles twitched in anger, but David stood firm. He knew that the fate of humanity rested on his ability to convince the council of the righteousness of their actions. The chamber fell silent as Nathan rose to his feet, the stasis cuffs around his wrists glowing faintly. He stepped forward, his gaze sweeping across the assembled councillors before settling on Pryla. The High Councillor's mandibles twitched in agitation, but he remained seated, his compound eyes fixed on the human. I request permission to address the council directly, Nathan said, his voice steady and clear. Pryla's body quivered with barely contained anger. You have no right to speak here, human. Your fate has already been decided. But the other councillors murmured their dissent, and eventually Pryla was forced to acquiesce. Very well, he rasped, but choose your words carefully. Nathan nodded, taking a deep breath before beginning. I stand before you today not to deny the consequences of my actions, but to provide context for the decision that led us here. He paused, his eyes closing briefly as if steeling himself for what he was about to say. I was the commanding officer who gave the order to fire the Goliath. The responsibility for the destruction of that moon and the lives lost falls squarely on my shoulders. The chamber erupted in a cacophony of clicking and hissing, but Nathan pressed on. But I did not make this choice lightly. We had exhausted every diplomatic avenue available to us. We met with Kalthari representatives, agreed to a ceasefire and the withdrawal of their forces from our territory. He activated a holographic display, showing footage of the secret meeting. And yet mere hours after the agreement was signed, the Kalthari launched a surprise attack on one of our colonies. Thousands of civilians were massacred in cold blood. The images shifted, revealing the devastation wrought by the Kalthari assault. Burned buildings, piles of human corpses, children crying over the bodies of their parents. The councillors fell silent, some averting their eyes from the horrific scenes. We were left with no choice, Nathan said, his voice thick with emotion. The Kalthari had revealed their true intentions, and we knew that they would not stop until humanity was wiped from the galaxy. He turned to face Pryla directly. And where was the Galactic Council during all of this? We pleaded for your assistance, begged for your intervention, but our cries fell on deaf ears. Pryla bristled his claws clicking against his podium. The Council is not responsible for the actions of individual species. We cannot be expected to police every conflict in the galaxy. Nathan shook his head. And yet you claim the authority to pass judgment on those who are forced to defend themselves. The Council's bureaucracy and lack of enforcement have allowed aggressors like the Kalthari to operate with impunity. He looked around the chamber, making eye contact with each counsellor in turn. I ask you to consider the context of our actions. We did not seek war, but when it came to our doorstep, we had no choice but to meet it head on. As Nathan concluded his speech, the chamber fell silent once more. Many of the counsellors appeared to be grappling with the weight of his words, their expressions ranging from contemplative to conflicted. But Pryla remained unmoved. He rose to his feet, his segmented body uncoiling to its full height. Your words are meaningless, human. You have violated our most sacred laws, and you must face the consequences of your actions. The High Councillor's declaration hung in the air, a palpable tension settling over the chamber. The fate of humanity and the galaxy as a whole hung in the balance. The chamber doors burst open, and a group of Kalthari survivors stormed into the Council Chamber. Their leader, a battle-scarred Kalthari with a missing eye, marched forward. Pryla slammed his clawed appendage against the podium. This interruption is unacceptable. Guards, remove these intruders at once. But the other counselors intervened, their curiosity piqued by the unexpected arrival. The Kalthari leader stepped forward, his single eye filled with pain and anger. I am General Zortak of the Kalthari Empire, and I demand to be heard. Nathan and David exchanged uneasy glances as Zortak began his testimony. The general's voice quivered with emotion, 
as he described the destruction of the Kalthari moon. We had no warning, no chance to evacuate. The human weapon struck without mercy, obliterating everything in its path. I watched helplessly as my people were vaporized before my eyes. Zortak pointed an accusing claw at Nathan. This human is no hero. He is a war criminal, responsible for the deaths of countless innocent Kalthari. The occupation of that moon was a necessary measure to protect our borders from human aggression. We had every right to defend ourselves. The council chamber erupted in murmurs and whispers as the representatives grappled with Zortak's words. Nathan's jaw clenched and David's brow furrowed with concern. The tide of opinion seemed to be turning against them. Suddenly a hooded figure emerged from the shadows, making his way towards the center of the chamber. The figure threw back his hood, revealing himself to be a Kalthari with a gaunt, haunted expression. I am Dr. Kalzor, and I have a confession to make. The council fell silent as Dr. Kalzor began to speak, his voice trembling with guilt and remorse. The Kalthari Empire was not merely occupying that moon for defensive purposes. We were developing a biological weapon of unimaginable destructive power, capable of wiping out entire species. Gasps of horror filled the chamber as Dr. Kalzor continued. The research facility was located on that very moon, hidden beneath the surface. Our plan was to unleash the bioweapon on Earth and any other species that stood in our way. The humans' actions, while devastating, may have prevented a far greater catastrophe. The scientist produced a data drive from his robes and handed it to Pryler. This contains all the evidence you need to verify my claims. Project Extinction, as it was called, was the Kalthari's ultimate solution to any resistance to our conquest. The council erupted into chaos as representatives shouted questions and accusations. Pryler, his exoskeleton pale and his claws shaking, called for order. In light of this disturbing revelation, I move to postpone the human trial until a full investigation into the Kalthari's bioweapon program can be conducted. As the council voted in favor of Pryler's motion, Nathan and David shared a look of cautious relief. The truth, however horrifying, had finally come to light. The fate of humanity and the galaxy itself hung in the balance as the council prepared to unravel the true extent of the Kalthari's sinister intentions. The council chamber buzzed with activity as representatives from various species hurried to their seats. The revelation of the Kalthari's bioweapon program had sent shockwaves through the galactic community. Prylar, his exoskeleton still pale from the weight of the news, called the emergency session to order. In light of the disturbing evidence provided by Dr. Kalzor, the council has no choice but to launch a full investigation into the Kalthari's actions, Pryler announced, his voice echoing through the chamber. We must determine the extent of this bioweapon program and ensure that any remaining stockpiles are secured and destroyed. As the council debated the best course of action, an urgent transmission interrupted the proceedings. A holographic image of a battle-scarred Kalthari commander appeared in the center of the chamber, his eyes blazing with defiance. I am General Zarvok, leader of the true Kalthari Empire, he declared, his voice dripping with venom. We do not recognize the authority of this council or the weak-willed traitors who have surrendered to the humans. The chamber erupted in a chorus of outrage, but Zarvok continued undeterred. We have seized control of the remaining bioweapon stockpiles, and we will not hesitate to unleash them upon the galaxy unless our demands are met. The Kalthari Empire will rise again, and we will take our rightful place as the dominant power in the universe. The transmission cut out, leaving the council in a state of stunned silence. Pryler slammed his clawed appendage against the podium, his voice trembling with rage and fear. We cannot allow these extremists to hold the galaxy hostage. We must act swiftly to neutralize this threat. Nathan rose from his seat, his eyes filled with determination. I volunteer to lead the task force against the rogue Kalthari, he said, his voice steady and clear. I have experience fighting their kind, and I know what it takes to stop them. Pryler hesitated for a moment, his compound eyes studying Nathan intently. Very well, human, he
he said at last, you will have the full support of the Council in this endeavor. But remember, the fate of the galaxy rests on your shoulders. As the Council hastily assembled the task force, Nathan found himself working alongside Pryler and representatives from a dozen other species. The differences that had once divided them seemed to melt away in the face of this new threat, replaced by a sense of unity and purpose. The task force tracked the rogue Kalthari to a remote asteroid field on the edge of Kalthari space. As they approached the enemy stronghold, Nathan could see the bioweapon containers glinting in the starlight, guarded by a fleet of heavily armed Kalthari warships. The battle was intense and brutal, with losses on both sides. Nathan and his team fought their way through the enemy defences, desperate to reach the bioweapons before they could be unleashed. In the chaos of the firefight, Nathan found himself back to back with Pryler, their weapons blazing as they cut down wave after wave of Kalthari soldiers. In a final desperate push, they breached the enemy command centre. General Zarvok stood before them, his claws hovering over the bioweapon release controls. Nathan and Pryler charged forward, engaging the Kalthari leader in a fierce hand-to-hand -hand battle. As they fought, Zarvok's guards opened fire, their energy beams slicing through the air. In a split second, Prylar threw himself in front of Nathan, shielding the human from the deadly barrage. Nathan watched in horror as Prylar's exoskeleton shattered, his body crumpling to the ground. With a roar of rage and grief, Nathan surged forward, his blaster tearing through Zarvok's armor and sending the Kalthari warlord tumbling to the floor. The bioweapon controls sparked and fizzled, the threat neutralized at last. Nathan knelt beside Prylar cradling the dying Prylorian in his arms. Why did you do it? he asked, his voice choked with emotion. Pryla's compound eyes flickered, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Because I was wrong about you, human, he whispered. Your people are not the monsters I believed them to be. You are brave, and you are willing to fight for what is right. The galaxy needs more like you. With those final words, Pryla's eyes dimmed, his body going still in Nathan's arms. The human soldier bowed his head, tears streaming down his face as the weight of the Prylorian sacrifice hit him. In the aftermath of the battle, the Galactic Council convened once more. The charges against Nathan and the human race were dropped, the Council acknowledging that their actions, while extreme, had been taken in the face of an unprecedented threat. But the Council also recognized the need for change. New protocols were established for the use of weapons of mass destruction, and a permanent galactic defense force was created to address future threats to peace and stability. As for Nathan, he returned to Earth a hero, but also a changed man. The weight of the lives lost and the decisions made hung heavy on his conscience, and he vowed to dedicate his life to finding peaceful solutions to galactic conflicts. He knew that the road ahead would be long and difficult, but he was ready to face the challenges that lay before him. And so the galaxy began to heal, the wounds of the conflict slowly mending. The Kalthari Empire, its true nature revealed, and its military might shattered, collapsed into chaos and civil war, a grim reminder of the consequences of unchecked aggression and the pursuit of power at any cost. But from the ashes of that conflict a new hope emerged, a hope for a future of peace and unity among the stars. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.